Hello everybody, welcome back to Read and Reread. I am Angelia and today it's the October TBR. I'm really excited about this one. There's a bunch of fun events, October. Well, there's still a promise of fall. There's absolutely no sign of it arriving here, but I, I'm i just going with the, the state of mind, the fall, the Victorian literature. I'm just hoping it all comes together. So before I get started, I have to show you my shirt because it's thematic for today and you can't see any of it. So hang on, let's just back it up here. Ta-da! Do you get it? And I've had exactly one person in public who understood the shirt. Of course, it was at a bookstore, but I like it and it, I bought it for me. And so that's all that matters. All right, so of course, the first thing on the list is Victober. This is a huge event on BookTube and it is an annual celebration of Victorian literature. There are multiple hosts and they each are um, sponsoring a theme and there's prompts and all kinds of good stuff. So I'm going to link that information in my description box. If you want to go look at their videos um, that get more into the details, but all you really need to know to get started is that it's time to choose and read some books from the Victorian era. And when I participate in themes that have a lot of different prompts, I usually, I know a lot of people like to start with the prompts and then look for a book that goes with it. And I kind of work backwards. I just go with the overarching idea and pick the books I want to read. And then as I read, I think about how they might represent the ideas in the prompts. So I'm not going to talk about the prompts now, but when I have read the books, I will look at those themes or prompts and see how they might uh, relate. So the first book is The Group Read, and that is The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope. It's a big chunkster, but it is broken down into a few chapters a day in The Group Read, which is on Discord, which you can get to if you watch one of the host videos. And I have never read anything by Anthony Trollope, but I have heard him spoken highly of, wait, I'm not sure that was a very grammatical sentence. I've, I've heard him highly... No, I'm not going to try to do it again. Um, people like him. People, he's, he's a favorite author of many people, and I have never read anything by him. And they tend, I think they're all, are they all big chunksters? The ones I've seen are. But uh, anyway, this is the group read. So I set aside some other long books that I thought I might read um, as my book on the side during this event, and instead I'm going to try the Trollope. And I really don't know anything about Trollope or what this book is about, but um, it was written in 1874, and it is, a, it is now, it was unpopular on its first appearance, but now widely recognized as Trollope's masterpiece. In an, an unorthodox satire with a happy ending, it explores decadence and change in what Frank Kermode calls a world increasingly more congenial to the speculator than to the gentleman. So I think that it um, has something to do with finances and gold diggers and things like that. So it looks like fun. I wanted to can maybe do a little, you know, a soft launch and get started in advance, but I'm going out of town tomorrow and I'm not going to be back until the day that it starts. So I don't think I will get any kind of jump on this. I'll just, I'll just read according to the schedule. And uh, so I'll get started on the first. The next one that I chose for Victober is a reread for me. And that is Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. And I don't know right offhand what year this came out. I don't know if I can find it really fast or not. Um, there's like an entire timeline here, so I'll figure it out later. But I did read Gaskell a few years, read Gaskell. I read, yes, I have read some Gaskell and I read Cranford a few years ago and I really loved it. Um, it's, it's, I think somehow when I was working on this TBR, this Victober part of the TBR, I was gravitating towards lighter material. Um, I don't know what I was reading when I was working on this, probably like Prophet Song or something, but Anyway, I really wanted to go back into this world of Cranford, which is really a story about a small town that is mainly women, and it's just, it's very funny. Their daily life, their 
financial situations and how they how they make a living and I don't know if you try to say what it's about it sounds kind of boring but it isn't at all it's very charming and it's not it's not fluffy either it, it does get into some um, more substantial issues about the lives of women at the time but I just really love this book and I want to read it again and my uh, my last one because I decided to really rein it in and not go completely berserk with the Victoriana this year and uh, because there's other there's some other events I'm also participating in and just some books in general that I feel like reading so I decided to keep it manageable on the Victober. I reserve the right to read Victorian literature all the rest of the year because there's a lot of other books I want to get to. But so the last one I chose is a book I've been wanting to read for a while. Around kind of circa the same time I read Cranford, I read The Tenet of Wildfell Hall and I really uh, enjoyed that book as well. And ever since then, I've been on the lookout for this other book by Anne Bronte called Agnes Gray. And this... Um, there's a couple of spoiler alerts for an upcoming haul video, but I did find this really nice volume. And uh, so I've been wanting to read this book that I think, I can't remember if she wrote this before or after The Tenet of Wildfell Hall, but I will review. Oh, this is her debut novel. So this came before Wildfell Hall, 1857. And it's uh, kind of based on, it's a little bit autobiographical based on her experiences working as a governess. And by the way, there's another event that dovetails with Victober, and that is that AJ, AJ Dunn Reads and Writes, has announced that they are going to read some Bronte books this October, and they're calling it Brontoberfest, I think. I'll double check, but I think it's Brontoberfest. And I was really excited when I was watching that video and they started talking about which books, and then I thought, oh good, I hope it's Agnes Gray, and it was. So I'm I'm really um, interested to see what another person will think when they also read this book. So if you are also looking for a slimmer book to read for Victoberfest or Bronto, no, Victober or Brontoberfest, uh, consider Agnes Gray. And I will also link AJ's video as well um, if you wanna watch their TBR and see a little bit more about that. Okay, so that's it. My Victober is manageable. It is not Charles Dickens length. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Now there are some other um, things that are happening in October that I am possibly participating in as well. So let's let's see what else we have here. All right, so also, of course, October is spooky season, and I, I'm going a little bit light on this one as well. I, um, I thought about some different horror books, and I wasn't really feeling it, but I did think of kind of a modern classic that I wanted to read. So I checked out from the library. I have always, this doesn't look like anything, but it's, I have, can you see it? Oh, there, it's like sideways. I have always lived in the castle by Shirley Jackson. The only thing I've ever read by Shirley Jackson is The Lottery. And I have not read this or what's that other one? Did she read the haunt? Did she write the Haunting of Hill House? I think um, I haven't read that either. And am I right about that? Yes. But this is I like this edition too. This is Penguin. This is something new I think in the Penguin Classics. Um, Penguin Vitae. Anyway, I checked it out. I'm going to read it again. I don't know what it's about, but I hear it mentioned all the time, and I usually see that cover that has kind of these creepy looking kids on it, but I got a different one, and it has, okay, I really like how there's like a teapot with the penguin in it. So I'm going to be reading We Have Always Lived in the Castle. And the other spooky thing I had is, I don't have it right here with me, but it's in one of my anthologies, and that is the the story, The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. And I don't really know if it's a short story or a novella. I've been meaning to read some more Henry James and rather than take on something long like The Portrait of a Lady, I think I will hit this story and see how I feel about it. Those are the huge events. We have some smaller things. Um, there's a book on the uh, 
what is that called? The, the queer TBR tackle. It's been a year long thing um, that Greg at Supposedly Fun and Jen the Librarian put together of books from their library that they've been meaning to read that have uh, queer authors, queer themes, etc. And throughout the year, I've picked a few that I also wanted to read. And one of them comes up this month, which is Tales of the City by Armistead Ma Malpin. I think it's how you say his name. And this one, this one was the one I, when I heard this was on, I thought, oh good, I've always wanted to read that. I'm going to read that one. And then on one of my videos where I do the Time Warp Tuesday, I discovered that I did read this book and it was 10 or 15 years ago and I wrote about it in my journal. The entry rang exactly zero bells. I have no recollection of this book at all. So I'm going to read it again and we'll see if any light bulbs come on. But it is set in San Francisco, which is a city that I really love that we just visited um, in where, when was that? Is it July? The end of July, I think. And uh, anyway, it's set there. It, but it, I think it was written in the late seventies. Let's double check. Um, nineteen seventy-eight, and it's the beginning of a long series. And I know there was a TV series as well. I have never seen it. Um, but the, it just says the first of nine novels about the denizens of the mythic apartment house at 28 Barbary Lane. Tales is both a sparkling comedy of manners and an indelible portrait of an era that forever changed the way we lived. So I think it's kind of in little vignettes, the chapters, and um, I'm excited to read it once again. I've said excited to read it too many times. I'm going to try to put a moratorium on that expression for the remainder of this video. Well, you know what? This is easy because the next book I'm not really excited about. Okay, I don't know if this is going to happen. Every time I talk about the banned book club at the library, it's a case of, well, here's what was selected, and I don't know. So I, I'm kind of a fair weather attendee at this, at this book club because they are, their criteria is to, I mean, they're choosing books that have been banned, and they're all worthwhile selections, but they're not necessarily what I want to read or are at that time. And they have to pick things that are in multiple enough copies so that they can provide them to the people at the club. They don't want to pick something very, very newish where maybe the library doesn't have it or they only have a couple copies because they don't want anyone to feel that they would have to buy something to participate. And I appreciate all that. I think that's a great... Um, rule for themselves, but it kind of relegates the whole project into older books and classics, and sometimes they're, they aren't something I feel like revisiting, but anyway, so the one, <laughs> this is a big old lead up for the fact that this month's selection is Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence. If you have watched um, some of my recent videos, I talked about D.H. Lawrence a little bit not long ago, because I read a short story that had something to do with him, and I remembered when I took a class of a whole semester of D.H. Lawrence, which is when I got this book, and I took the class because I really liked the professor, and I took a couple of really strange classes just because I liked that professor, but this was one of them, and um, I remember as a 20-year-old reading this book and thinking that it well, okay, in the class and reading his novels, it clearly is not his strongest novel. But also, it just, I didn't love this book. I thought it was um, pretty misogynistic. And if if it bothered me at 20, imagine how it's going to hit me now that I'm an old battle axe in my mid-50s. So I, you know, um, maybe, maybe just for fun, if I have time. And I, But I, I, I'm not, I don't have high hopes for loving Lady Chatterley's lover. And you know, the spicy scenes are not gonna save it if the book stinks, so we shall see. All right, um, a couple of short story collections. Um, circling back to all of the short stories I've been reading in the month of September, there were some that came out of collections that I own but I have not yet read, and so I know for sure, I want to circle back to several of them. So I picked two of them out for this upcoming month, and that is Walk the Blue Fields by Claire Keegan. 
I read the title story, but I haven't read any of the others. So I want to, uh, I want to read this collection and, um, yeah, I'm just really, um, I'm happily anticipating the reading experience of Walk the Blue Fields. Another one that I pulled out to go back to is Blood Child by Octavia Butler because every month needs to have something speculative and weird and um, so here it is and I can always count on Octavia Butler to be unusual, to be not quite what I expected, and to leave me with some things to think about. And even the story that I read in this collection, the title story, I really loved how this collection, she comes in and makes her own comments after the story. So I'm looking forward to that with the rest of the stories in this collection. And hopefully that will continue to stall me out from uh, buying another novel by her before I finish reading what I already have, because I have got wild seed on the brain. This last category is things that don't have anything to do with prior events or current events. These are just some books that I'm thinking about that I want to read this month. And the one that I'm most excited about, if if the other ones never happen, that's fine. But this one, wait, there's a receipt stuck in it. This one is happening for sure. And that is the Heaven and Earth Grocery Store. Yes, Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride. I was trying to say grocery story, but that isn't it. Um, this is McBride's new novel. I loved Deacon King Kong, and I've never read The Good Lord Bird. I really, I want to get a copy of that and read it, and I kind of want to get my own copy of Deacon King Kong and read it again. Um, and I haven't even read the memoir that he wrote back before the novel. So this, I've only read one book by him, basically, is what I'm saying, and I really loved it. So now I'm, I need to you know, read the rest. So I got this. I've been hearing wonderful things about it. Um, it's kind of funny because I was reading the little, I, do, I didn't read the whole uh, blurb because I've had, I've been burnt lately with spoilers and blurbs, but just this first paragraph. And I, when I got this and read it, I was in the middle of reading Kayla and which of course has to do with some people getting together back in a town after some time has passed. And then a missing person is found because they dug up some bones. And so then I read this. In 1972, when workers in Pottstown, Pennsylvania were digging the foundations for a new housing development, the last thing they expected to uncover was a human skeleton, which is exactly what happened in Kayla. Who the skeleton was and how it got buried there were just two of the long held secrets that have been kept for decades by the residents of Chicken Hill the dilapidated neighborhood where immigrant Jews and African Americans live side by side, sharing ambitions and sorrows. You know, that's all I need to know. I can tell it's going to be good. And I am joyfully anticipatory of an excellent reading experience. All right. And then I have two more library books that are maybes and I'm just things from my kind of longer consideration list that popped up for me at the library. One of them isn't here yet. I'll just put that one up there. Uh, it says it's in transit, but it didn't get here in time for when I wanted to film this video. And that is, Your Driver is Waiting by an author whose name I don't remember because the book isn't here yet. So I'm going to put it up on the screen. Um, but I heard maybe a month or two ago, I saw several different people talk about this book on their booktube channels and it sounded really good to me. It sounded intriguing. And then I saw that the library had acquired it. So I requested it and it didn't quite make it here in time, but it should be here for me when I get back from my trip. So I'm going to pick up this book. I remember the title. I can picture the cover in my mind, I'm blanking out on the author. Um, I think it was a woman. I'm gonna put it up there. All right, and then last but not least, possibly or maybe, who knows, is The New Life by Tom Crew. And I did pick this up in the new releases. Um, again, several months ago, a lot of people were reading this. A lot of people seemed like they really loved it. They thought it was going to possibly make the booker list, but it didn't. And the problem is, so I checked it out based on all that, and then I'm looking at it, and I can't tell 
if it's going to be good or boring. Good or boring. Um, if I hadn't heard a bunch of good buzz and I just read this, I'd kind of be thinking, I don't know. So if you have read this, is it good or is it boring? Do I want to read it or do I want to send it back? Let me know in the comments. Okay, that's it. Uh, inevitably, there will be something here that I end up not reading and something else that I read instead. Um, my Saturday, no, my Saturday, my September TBR, I actually read almost everything on it. I think there was one book. In fact, let me grab that. I ran out of time and I haven't read Reamble yet by Priya Hine. So I might uh, slip that into October because I still do want to read it. And I actually, I read everything else. And, uh, and then some books that I discovered along the way during September. So uh, let's just throw this into the TBR as well. And that will, uh, that's plenty. I, I probably won't get through all that. So I've been enjoying seeing other people's October reading plans. Let me know down in the comments what you are most excited about reading for October. Um, what you have in mind and are you participating in any of these events and I will talk to you soon when I get back from my travels. So have a great week. Bye-bye.